Hello, my friends. Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop, and we have a doozy of a new project to get started on. It's one that I know you're going to really enjoy watching. It's about an 1880s Washburn Parlor guitar. I'll show you what we're talking about and tell you all about it right after this. Well, this is going to be a fun project and I'm really looking forward to it. Here is this beautiful old Washburn guitar. It's a George Washburn. Did you notice that the tuning keys are friction pegs? Yep, they're friction pegs. These are not quite like the, the violin friction pegs, although they do make these kinds of friction pegs for violins as well. But these are kind of a, a forerunner of your typical geared mechanical tuning keys. These screws in the end tighten it up and they make more friction, basically, is what they do. There's no gears in this. It's just that you turn this and by tightening this screw, it's harder to turn. And when it's harder to turn, then that keeps the tension on the string. That's really all there is to the way these tuning keys work. But back in the... 1880s, 1890s, whenever this was made, and it might even be a little older than that. I, I didn't look it up, but uh, I'll show you here the body. It's just a real beautiful looking guitar. The way it came in was this was over this area here. So you might say, well, why would that be over that area? That kills the holes. Well, they had a uh, bridge on there like that. And they also had this tailpiece on here. So they had it strung up this way. And you might say, well, why did they do that? My guess is that the bridge pulled off. You can see here that the bridge uh, used to be on there and it pulled and it even chipped it out a little bit. My guess is that this was some sort of a retro fit kit. And the reason I call it a kit is because it looks like it was all designed to work together. This um, tail piece, you know, it's, first of all, it's an odd shape. It's got that great big round loop in it. Well, that round loop fits this little pulley right here, which fits on the tail pin. So you put this on here like so, and then you got that in, you put that through the uh, tail pin hole there on the end of the end pin hole, that would hold the tail piece on. I guess my point in telling you the, about this in detail is that this isn't just some person figuring this out and fixing it on his own. This is some sort of a factory retrofit type kit. There may have been such a issue with these guitars losing their bridges that they made all of this stuff special to retrofit them. I really do believe that it, this was a purposely made thing that they probably mass produced because it's so everything's perfect. None of this is homemade. You know, you can look at this and see the detail in the end there, and it's got the same detail there, and it's long enough to cover up that entire long bridge area. See, so it was all thought out. It wasn't somebody just in their home garage just saying, well, here's how I'm going to fix it. I'm pretty sure manufactured and purchased stuff, and it was done as a kit. At least that's my theory, and I'm sticking to it, because you just don't have it work out this perfectly in random. You know, it just doesn't work that way. Only reason I say it just doesn't work that way is because I've been doing this for 40 years. I ain't never seen nothing like it. <laughs> You can see here that uh, the retrofit kit worked great for a while, but then the, the top came loose from the guitar here on the sides, and then that, you know, got that tailpiece thing got pulled into the top there. You can see the grooves, and the top is loose from the back. The old hide glue went and hid. You know what I always say, hide glue is just an acronym for holds initially, delaminates eventually. And that's pretty much what hide glue is. It was the best form of glue that you could get back when ox carts were the best form of transportation. But guess what? Transportation has improved and so has glue technology. We will not be using hide glue on this, regardless of all the people out there that think that it has to be fixed with hide glue. Sorry, that ain't gonna happen. We're gonna fix it where it won't break again. And hide glue would just fix it for a few years and then it would come apart again. The back is loose on it also. You know, we're going to fix all of that 
I can hear just a little bit of stuff rattling around inside there. It's probably just junk. There might be some wood chips or something we need to salvage, who knows. But we're gonna give it a going over. Um, looking at the neck, I can tell you that it's probably gonna need a neck reset in addition. I'm really not looking forward to that part. The neck angle is like this versus like that. You know, and of course I'm exaggerating both of those, but it's definitely on the upslope instead of the downslope. And it should be slightly down. There's also a slight underbow in the neck, probably cause there's no truss rod. There might be an, a non-adjustable truss rod in there, you never know, but I don't think there's any truss rod in it, and this was way before they started making them adjust through the sound hole here. I can feel hide glue dripping out everywhere, and I, I'm actually rubbing that off, and it's it's flaking off. There's hide glue just dripped out on at the end of the neck heel there. I can just feel it, and it just chipped off like crazy. There was a lot of it. I'll clean off the decal in here where maybe you can see it a little better get the dust off of it and I'll try to get the light right and then you can see the decal there where it says George Washburn I'll hold it still maybe you can read it anyway I'm looking forward to working on this little parlor guitar I think it's gonna be a neat one just so you know the back and sides is high grade it's rosewood there's a little center seam up through there that seems to be intact at the moment. I think I'm going to try to set it back to be as original as possible. We'll probably make and uh, try to replicate the old bridge that used to be on here and try to make all that work out. At least that's where I think we're going. I will confirm all that with the customer in case he wants it set back up this way. I think this is neat and we would keep it as part of the history of the guitar, but for my two cents worth, I would say put it back like it was made originally. You might think that this is enough, but there's more. I want to show you that right now. So what more could there be? Well, look at this old case. Yeah, it's one of the old coffin cases and it's in relatively okay shape, but it does need a lot of TLC. The hinges are off of it, uh, lots of problems. The latch isn't working. You can see there was a monogram initials there and I believe that says J-E-R, which uh, I, think that that should mean that it's for me, right, Jerry? It's just short for Jerry. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the outside of the case looks neat enough, but look at the inside of the case if you really want to see something cool. Can you see the, de the pictures and, you know, the Victorian era design and everything? And a lot of that stuff is falling out and laying in the bottom of the case. Just want to say on the record that uh, I have talked to the customer. He is okay with me putting it back to the original bridge. He also uh, is a little bit hesitant on the case. You know, there's a little bit of a budget on this. We're trying to keep it within a, a reasonable cost. So we're going to concentrate on the guitar. And if we get the guitar done and, uh, get, you know, if it goes easy, if we're able to do it quickly and we're not really into it big on the cost, well, then we may be restoring that case as well. So I just wanted to clear that up in case we don't actually get to the case. In an effort to restore this old Washburn guitar, we were looking at uh, pictures of the Washburn guitars uh, in the 1880s. We are pretty sure that the guitar we have is from approximately 1880 to about 1889, somewhere in there. I mean, it falls in that range. And the guitars in that range had a bridge that looked like this. So we're going to try to make a bridge that looks just like that and uh, put that back on the guitar. For me, the first step in restoring this old guitar is to make a new bridge for this and go ahead and get that in place. You know, that'll stabilize this top in the sense that if I have to lift up on it, it won't, it'd be less likely to crack or anything like that because these old tops get brittle, you know, and if I get a piece glued on here and get it solid, then that will make this whole top that just that much more stable as I work on the rest of the guitar. That's my theory and that's what I'm going to do. Now this old piece was actually bigger 
and, and intentionally so to cover up this whole scar. But I'm going to try to make this one up really close to the original size, maybe just a hair bigger, just to make sure that we cover the whole area. It looks like 910 thousandths. So I'm going to add a little bit there, just for safety's sake. And it sounds like a lot, but I'm not. It's not very much. You can barely tell it's even any bigger. I'm going to make it 940 thousandths. And I think that'll cover up some of the extra scarring in the area there. I might have to go a hair bigger. I might just go make it an even 950. I think that's what we're going to need to do to kind of cover up all the scarring. And like I said, no one will notice that slight 50 thousandths difference. You, it just won't even be there. You won't even see that. And so I'm going to try to get me a piece of wood and get it in this approximate shape. As I start on this bridge, I'll take you along for the ride to show you how I make a duplicate of the original. Well, it just so happens I found a piece of ebony that I think will fit the bill just perfectly. Um, it's plenty wide more than enough thickness to it and more than enough length. So this piece here, which I otherwise probably wouldn't use for anything, will make a perfect bridge for this. It looks like this bridge may have been measured in millimeters because it doesn't work out evenly on the inch scale. It's like six and five sixteenths, but on the metric scale, it works out to 160 millimeters almost exactly. So I think I'll just use the millimeter scale for making this. We'll make it 160 millimeters long. It works on the width too, so it's 25 millimeters wide, looks like would be just about perfect. And let's see if that kind of measures out here to where I was at. Actually, 25 millimeters is just a hair wider than this, so I think I'll just go with that. I think I'll go with the uh, millimeter measurements. We'll go with 160 by 25 millimeters. That should work out just great. We're at the bandsaw and we're set up to cut out uh, that strip. Uh, I said 25 millimeters and we have this set for about 27 millimeters to give us a little extra there. And then we can sand it down to the perfect measurement. And for the record, we're going to make this 25 millimeters, and right now you can see it's at about 26.6 millimeters. So we're going to run it through my thickness sander here to get it down that additional amount. This table screws up and down. It is set up at eight threads per inch, so one full turn is an eighth of an inch. Looks like I've got enough room, so we're, we're right there now. We're just kissing it there, so we'll start with that as the first pass. An old battered case, weathered and worn, with the hinges all rusted. And the fabric. Well, that came. <clears throat> I'm going to stop right there. It's 25.5, so we got 25 and a half millimeters there, and I really think that's a good thing. You know, I uh, a little bit more will just make it that much more stable on the top of the guitar and that much more sturdier. And no one by looking would be able to tell the difference. Now we'll figure out what we want for a thickness and we'll work on that. As often happens, I've decided to change my order of operations and cut it to length before I thickness it. Because that way I don't have to run this whole thing through the thickness sander. I've already marked it off at 160 millimeters and I'll leave it just a fuzz proud of that so that we don't cut it short. But still cradled inside. Perhaps you can see there, I actually left the line. That's the way you can kind of make sure you're not cutting anything short. Just leave that line and that'll usually give you just that little bit extra. So now we're going to work on thickness in this and I really don't know how thick to make it. I think I'm just going to have to rely on my experience and just cut it down to where I think it looks good. By just some reasoning and comparative measurement measuring, I've decided on 8 millimeters. 
And uh, so I've set this saw to saw a little bit wider than eight millimeters, and then we'll finish it down to eight millimeters on our thickness sander. It was one old precious thing. It was grandpa's old fiddle. You can see there that's about 8.45 millimeters or 8.3 in different places. You know, the saw never cuts perfect. So right there, 8.35. That's why you want to allow some extra because the saw will never cut perfect. Now we'll take it over to the uh, thickness sander and we'll get it down to real close to 8 millimeters. Grandpa's old fiddle. Well, it depends on how you measure it. There's eight even exactly there. Eight even exactly there. So I'm going to call that close enough. Now all I have to do is figure out how to turn this into that. It's almost the same size. Isn't that amazing? In fact, it's just about the exact same size. We've got to uh, now figure out how we're going to convert this into what you saw on the screen. That might be a little tricky. I went over to my different hole jigs that I have and they are narrower. The, even the widest one is narrower than this. So what I think I'll try to do instead is I'll try to get a good accurate measurement for the holes. In other words, how far they span. 2.647, let's just convert that to millimeters and see if it would happen to be an even number. Well, 67.25, it's not exactly an even number, but that gives us a good idea of how far this is. So I've got that locked in. So what I probably wanna do then is find the center of this and then center this on this. At least that's what I think I wanna do. I'm just assuming that this is centered in the center of the guitar, and that may not be the case either. You really can't assume anything on these things, so you better check and measure everything. And I'm just gonna roughly, just get a rough idea. Uh, since we're using millimeters, let's just stick with that, and I'll find the approximate center, just by eyeball, of where I think the center is between these holes. And then, you know, just kinda keep it straight across here, and that comes out to about 16.3 centimeters that direction. So let me put 16.3 in the center here, this direction. That's about it. And it comes out pretty dang close here on the side. So I'm gonna say this thing is centered pretty darn well. So that's a good thing. So that means I can just kind of work off of numbers here on this piece and just keep them centered around this thing here and we should be good to go. So with that in mind, and we know this is 160 millimeters, right on the money, we'll mark off 80 as the center point. So there's my center mark. I'll do a little bit of math and figure this out exactly how I want to lay it out. I went ahead and drew my center line across there. And then I've kind of made up my mind here off camera that I don't care about the actual hole spacing yet. Just approximate on that would be is all I need. But I am going to write it down. 67 0.25 millimeter is the hole spacing. So I'm just gonna call it 67 for now. That'll be close enough. And then half of that would be 33.5. So let's move it down to 33.5. And then what I'm going to do is mark that off. Okay, so that's an approximate location where the holes go. That's all we need for now. What I'm doing is looking at the picture. Since I work in inches better, I'm gonna go back to inches on this, I think, for the moment, and because I know that better. And just by eye, I would say it looks like from the from this hole, you know, from, from this hole to where the uh, dip in this starts, I'm going to say it's about three-eighths of an inch. So I'm just going to mark off three-eighths of an inch since it's just an approximate because we don't really know. Actually, in looking at it again, I think I'm going to say it's a half inch. So I'm just going to go with a half inch from that and I'll go another half inch on this end. So this is kind of where the little channel starts. I'm just going to draw that in. 
from his heart for my grandpa. Now that channel looks like it's bigger than I thought it was going to look. It looks like it's a half inch also. Man, that's that's getting kind of big. But that's about what it looks like. I'm going to say that's what it looks like. So we'll just go with that for right at the moment and see if this is going to work out. There's a half inch and there's another. Let's see. We'll go down here and get another half inch. It may work out okay. I'm not sure yet. Okay, so this area here, and I'm just going to scribble it out. This is what gets cut out. This may work out because these edges have more of a taper like this than this edge. This edge only has a small taper, so that leaves a pretty close to a square there. So I'm just, this is just an approximate at this point, but that does leave a, you know, reasonably close to a square. In fact, be, by that, it almost seems like it needs to go a little further this way, but I'm not going to change that. I'm going to leave that where it's at. I think that's pretty good. Now what I need to do is find a way to dish this out uh, and of course a router or something like that would work but I'm going to give that a little bit of thought so I'll show you what I decide when I figure it out on my own. I thought about a lot of different ways I could cut these troughs through here and most of them take all kinds of weird setup and you know to make it accurate and correct and all that kind of thing even with a router i got my dremel your results may differ at first glance that looks good enough to me i don't know i might have to do a little bit more to it as i get into it more We'll just have to wait and see. This edge didn't clean up completely on the thickness sander. I'm going to taper that edge off a little bit, so I think that'll clean up as I do that. Right now, I'm gonna put these tapers in this, which uh, will make it match the original, I hope. I think I'll just go over to the uh, belt sander to do that. And I can still hear it laying up in I'm going to go compare it to the picture and decide what to do next. Well, I finished over at the belt sander and I looked at the picture on the computer and compared it to this. And the biggest difference is these valleys are much bigger. They're half again bigger on each side. The problem with that is that's going to weaken the bridge. And I am not sure I'm willing to go there. This gives you the flavor of the original without going crazy. I think I'm going to stop right here for now. I figure with my skill set, I could make this bigger if I need to down the road. And so right now, I think I'm just going to stop. My friends, I'm at the point where I'm nearly ready to glue this bridge on this guitar. But before I go to that extreme, I want to look on the inside and see what's going on in this guitar, because who knows? I haven't looked inside yet. Well, I'm glad I looked, because the bridge plate is busted. It could be that it's broken. It could be that it was made this way. And as I look at it right now, I would say it's made this way, and uh, it ain't good. Okay, first of all, first of all, the bridge plate that's inside this guitar does span the length, but it it's not quite as big as this. Not quite. It, I'd say it's two thirds or three three fourths the size of this, and it sits like this. In other words, it sits behind the holes, so the string buttons are pulling up right on the spruce, not even pulling up on the bridge pad. Number one, that's the first problem, which is a real big no-no. That's gonna bust this all out. In fact, it may have done that already. That may be why these holes are big and elongated here. So that's the first problem, and that's a big problem. Second problem is it's incredibly small, which, and it's back too far, and it's made out of spruce. So it's got about three to four, maybe five strikes against it already. And of course, you would know, it's, it feels like it's glued completely tight. Not a good scenario at all. That's not good. I can't in good conscience put my bridge on this thing until this is fixed. 
Man, that's not good at all. I'll try to let you guys see this. Uh, it's really difficult to hook up these remote cameras and get them to work properly, but I think it would be worth showing. It's the next day, and I've made a few determinations on this bridge plate. Definitely the bridge plate is broken in half. I can tell that after looking at it closer. And I've got my remote camera here hooked up and I'm going to show you guys and I'm going to let you guys just watch my screen here and I'll go on on the inside of the guitar and hopefully show you what that looks like. The most honest man that I ever had. Maybe you can see this area here is bare and this is where the bridge plate is. So you can see the bridge plate broke off right at the whole line. And it's really hard to show it very well, but that's the best I can show you right there. Anyway, I've got to get that old bridge plate out of there. I've actually started taking it out, but uh, it's going to be a slow process. So we'll see how it goes. I think you can see here on this end, I've already started pulling on it a little bit. That's about as good as I can show you with this camera setup. Hopefully some of that internal footage there turned out where you could see the problem. So I'm having to reach in here with this little Stumac bridge plate removal tool and try to get under that bridge plate and pull it out of there. Now I may have to put the new bridge on first uh, because I'm afraid I could split the top. But I'm just going to monkey with it and see if I can get it to cooperate here but if it looks like it's going to uh, put too much pressure on the top well then I may have to do something else I'm trying to do it without prying at all I'm just trying to slide it in between the top and the piece that's there I've got a piece coming out I can tell I don't know how good it came out well that's not good because that broke out a piece of the top right there that's what that is, I'm sure. Didn't expect that to happen. Uh, I tell you, it's never easy doing this. It's just never easy. I don't know. I'm going to have to think on it a little bit and try to figure out the best way to get that out of there because it needs to come out. I'm trying something. I'm holding this heat gun about six, eight inches above the top there. And I'm trying to simulate a hot car and see if that will be enough to make the hide glue to release on the inside. Trying to do it without affecting the finish. Just trying to heat it up really warm. I'm keeping it moving so that it doesn't burn in one spot or anything. That's pretty hot. It's hotter than I thought it might be. And his time on this old earth was most precious to me. I don't know if that'll make any difference or not, but let's just see. And not, nothing I can tell yet. Yeah, it's pretty darn warm, but it doesn't seem to be making any real significant difference. He lived on Curran River at the mouth Well, it's Saturday morning and it's cold outside. There's not much going on, so I thought I'd work on this some more. And I've been heating this up off, you know, off camera and pulling with this. And I've got it down to a thin strip left. I'm just trying to get it out of there. I don't think the heat is doing all that much, to be honest. The springs, and at night the hills that go as the old fiddle would ring. Getting a lot of it out of there, but it's not coming easy. Uh, that actually isn't 90% of it now, and 95% of it. I got just a little square right here left, I think. Grandpa's old fiddle plays sweet melody. And of course, as always, the last piece is the hardest because it's rounded off and nothing, there's no edge to catch. 
Well, I'm gonna look at it on the inside and see what it looks like. Actually, looking in there, there's a piece left in here and there's a piece right in here. I wish it was done. It's not easy, I'll tell you that for sure. He played it from his heart for my grandma. This is pretty sharp, but I think I'm even gonna have to sharpen it more. I don't know a good method for sharpening this, honestly, but I'm gonna sharpen the backside or flatten the backside on my stone here. This is actually the side that actually makes contact with the top. I just want to make sure there's no burrs on that. So that's got that pretty flat. And then as far as sharpening this goes, I think I'm gonna try, here's a fine diamond uh, stone or whatever you wanna to refer to it as. And I'm gonna to have to get it held some way where I can get a hold of this and, and, and do this. So I'll show you what I come up with. This seems to be my best technique. And I, I can feel the flatness there. And when I make contact with the full flatness, I am just stroking this here, trying to get it to get to that cutting edge. It seems like it's working. I successfully sharpened this and it's very, very sharp. And it does seem like it's shaving off the wood in there. I mean, the good news is it's kind of working. The bad news is you gotta be very careful because you can shave off the wrong thing when you can't see what you're doing. I'm trying to make sure I can feel exactly what I'm cutting. With love, and I can still hear it. It's difficult, I can tell you that. It probably would have been easier if this had been a hardwood to get it out of there. This softwood, uh, you know, bridge plate uh, just crumbles and breaks. It doesn't come out like in a piece, a solid piece, like the other wood would have. Laying up in heaven above. Hard to say, I'll have to look in there with the mirror again. I think the far end is good enough, but there, I still think there's quite a bit left in this general area, but it's a real thin layer, um, which makes it even harder to, to feel and get out of there. Just a boy had the time. It feels pretty smooth now, actually, by fingers. It feels okay. I think I might have it. Yeah, that, that made the difference right there, boy. Getting that thing razor sharp, and it's really sharp. Let me look in there again and see if I can see any difference. Well, quite honestly, I can still see where it was. And it does kind of look like there's still something there. I wish I had it all out of there, but I don't know if I can get it out of there. I remember a day when Grandpa and that old fiddle some old time. You always want better on these kinds of things. And I think I'm going to try for a little better here. I, it there's, seems like there's a little patch right there. If I can get that out, I think I'm okay. He did play. Well, now, Grandpa, he has left us for I think I'm going to have to call that good enough. Now I've got to decide how big of a bridge pad I can put back in there and fix that upright. Well, in case you had any doubts about me getting it out of there, here's everything that fell out when I shook it out here. Actually, some of the pieces fell on the floor. Anyway, uh, that's what all fell out. Now here, interesting enough, I think these might be part of the pictures that go in the case. So I'm going to pick that kind of stuff up and put it back in the case to hopefully restore the pictures in the case. I think I found the perfect piece to make the new bridge pad out of. This is a piece of Padauk, quarter sawn. The grain will be running perpendicular to the top, which is what you want. I'm planning to make it roughly, you know, roughly about that big, you know, where it's got a little more than a quarter inch on that side, you know, five sixteenths on each side would be really good. Maybe just a little bit longer this way 
that'll give this top some new good strength that it really needs and yet it uh, is a good tone wood so it's not going to hurt the tone too much in fact i think it'll maybe even help the the sound that's where i'm headed with it i think i'll cut out a nice piece of this and see how it fits up in there and then we'll fit it to shape okay that's just a seat of the pants fit but uh, that gives me some idea what's going on there that'll keep that top from bulging up and creating problems and and because if it bulges up then that's why the glue would fail so this should solve all those problems and make it sound better to boot make it last longer and the whole bit so i'm gonna go in here and see how this fits if it fits yeah actually i kind of like the fit i think it's just about perfect it's really pretty good now the only thing i got to figure out is lengthwise getting it to, to in the proper place that way i think that's going to work great i'm going to sand it just a little bit uh, it's pretty rough and i don't mind it being a little rough i just don't want it that rough well we sanded her down got the this will be the side that goes up it's still just a little tiny bit rough but that's okay i'm all right with that and then this side here is fairly smooth and i beveled all these edges let's see what it, thickness it wound up i wanted it to be over a hundred thousandths hundred and five thousandths so that's just about perfect you really can't hardly beat that i mean i could take it down just a hair more but i think that's real good and so essentially it's going to lay in there just about like that i could uh line it up with these holes that's a good idea i'll uh i'll just take and uh I'll just kind of draw these holes, the center of these holes, with pencil. Actually, I'm going to clean it first, and then I'm going to do that. I'm going to draw lines across this, and then that way when I stick it in there, I can line those lines up with these holes. And that way I'll know I've got it about in the center. And to clean the oil off this wood, I've just got some lacquer thinner. and. I can use acetone, either one of those works great. I actually prefer a uh, lacquer thinner myself. I really think it's the best solvent. For my money, it really cuts everything. Just trying to draw the as many of the oils out as I can so that when I put uh, the glue on it, it'll be right to the wood rather than the oily surface. You can see how quickly it turns everything orange, drawing those oils out. And lacquer thinner dries really fast. I mean, just like that, it's going to be dry pretty much. It just, it dries in just a few seconds. And then what I think I'll do, uh, just to make sure that it's dry before I put the glue on it, is I think I'll just take the heat gun, heat it a little bit. But he left me that old I know it's dry now for sure and it'll have more time to dry as I'm drawing these lines on here so basically I want to center it lengthwise this way and that's close enough I'm going to draw oh at least a few of these lines on here I think I'll maybe I'll just draw the two center holes and that way I'll if I get the two center lines lined up that ought to be good enough So let me test my theory now. Well, it works until I get the glue on it now that I think about it. That's going to be an issue. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll draw a circle around that. And I'll leave the glue off that area. That way, I'll be sure to line it up pretty good. I hope so anyway. Well, my friends, I think I've got this figured out. Uh, yeah, you never know until you know. But uh, I'm going to put this on the top of the guitar to, to, for the clamps to clamp down. This will be on the inside, big thick piece to keep it good and flat and keep, you know, like that. And so there ain't nothing to it except to do it, so let's get her done. You always uh, discover stuff after you get going here, and you, you think, wow, I should have done this or done that, but you never know what you don't know till you don't know it. <laughs> right, right over my, my mark, first thing. That was good, that was perfect. 
first thing. I didn't even give myself a chance. Now I play it with love. Grandpa's old so I've got to clean that area off right there somehow. Stuff happens, that's all I can say. Got a little glue on the surface here. I should doing this for the camera. It's not the best way to do it. I'll wipe that off. That ain't no big deal. It's water soluble, but just trying to do it for the camera. Now that's a little more glue than I really want on there. So I'm gonna kind of wipe some of it off. I just want full coverage, but not tons of squeeze out. For my grandma. It's kind of getting tacky already, so I think I can go ahead and put it up in there. At least I hope I can. I'm going to go ahead and get this block of wood in there on the ready to go because this will fall out of there just as sure as I'm sitting here if I don't have it in there ready. Wrinkled old hands, he held it with love. That's just about perfect right there based on that one hole that's still left. Just really close to perfect. Now I gotta get my hand on the call. Boy, it's tight in there. My hands are too big for this hole. Ah, I got my hand turned around. I can't turn it back the other way now. Oh, there I got it. Wow, that was hard. Way harder than I expected. Well, I hope that's close. Now, can I get a clamp in here while I got my hand in here? Probably not. And I can still hear it playing up in heaven above. I'm not so sure I can. Yep, I got it. Wow, that wasn't simple. Before I go any further, I'm getting some water and clean up my little mess here. Okay, got a little bit of glue right there, so I just wipe that off. Not a big deal. A little bit right there, wipe that off. Looks like there's some mold and mildew on the top anyway. It's gonna need to be cleaned anyway. Yeah, it's pretty kind of moldy like. Yep, pretty bad. Okay, so now, by the way, on this, I sanded this, I beveled the underside edges and rounded the corners off so that they don't dig into this top. So in case you're wondering, I already did all that, because if you don't, by crushing this down like this, you could easily make a dent in the top. Now I'm gonna get my mirror and look on the inside and see if I need to adjust where I've got my clamps and things. I'm gonna try to look on the inside. This ain't gonna be easy. Yeah, boy, I can't really see much, I'll be honest. I, it ain't as good as I was hoping. The uh, call is that way quite a bit. I wish the call was this way considerable amount. Uh, yeah, I, I'm probably gonna, I don't even know how I can fix that without taking all the clamps off. Wow, what a pain. Yeah, you can't feel all that when you're in there, especially as tight as that is. Have to take two of them off for sure and see if I can get my hand in there. Again, loosen this clamp, move the call this way considerable amount. Will it let me do that? Of course not. Can't get on that end of it to move it. There we go. I think I can move it now. Yeah, I've moved it quite a bit. Let me just check and see how that looks before I commit to it again. Yeah, that looks good. I think I can live with that. Yep, that's pretty good. It's, it's still not quite to the end over here, but it's close enough that it doesn't matter. All right, we're gonna let that set overnight. Well, it's been 24 hours, so I'm gonna go ahead and 
um, try to get the bridge glued on here so we can make some progress on this guitar. I think I'm going to have to trace around this and scrape the finish and scrape it clean and all that good thing. So maybe I could hold this in place like that. Okay, I hope that's good enough. Quite honestly, everything seems like it's way harder than it should be. I guess that's just old age. Well, that looks pretty good. Now I'm just going to get that all cleaned off. And I'll just use my little handle that holds my plane to do that. I'm going to scrape it a little bit now just to try to get it flat and make sure that it's all the loose stuff is off there and the dirty stuff. And it looks pretty good to me. I think that's about as good as we're going to do. Uh, as I'm doing this, I'm having strong thoughts about these this hole spacing. Well, I don't think I had the camera on, but I've decided I'm going to use this as my pattern for drilling the holes. This is just a hair smaller than what's on there. I think it'll be just fine. I've got the glue coverage on both sides of this, and I set it on here, and I've wiggled it into place. But before I commit to that, I'm gonna clean up this extra glue to make sure it's right. You can see where I've washed the top there, it's much cleaner than the rest of it. So we'll have to do that, we'll have to clean the whole thing later. All right, let me see if I can get my hand in this thing to get this bridge up, glued up in here. Oh my goodness. I can't, once I get my hand in there, I can't turn my hand over is the problem. I can't tell which side was sanded. Not that side, this side. cold in the shop so I have my extra little jacket on, my wood cutting jacket. I have to undo my button here. I didn't give this a whole lot of forethought as you can see. All right, that's better. Now maybe I can get the clamp in here, maybe. Uh, or, or maybe not. How did I do it the last time? I don't know. It doesn't seem like it wants to go in there this time. There it is, I think. Of course, now I'm running into the bridge. Everything's moved on me. There we go, I think I'm, I think I'm about back to where I ought to be. Man, nothing simple. Give this just a little bit of tightening so I can get my hand out of there. Didn't get all this ready ahead of time like I usually do. I don't know that this is going to fit in there anyway. With my block of wood and the tall bridge here and all that good stuff. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I hope it fits. I don't think it's going to. Nope, it's not going to. Alright, so instead of that, I'll just put this on there just as an extra pressure. It would be simple if it would just be simple. Almost never is that the case. It's looking real good. It's got good even squeeze out around there, so I think we're okay. A teeny bit of squeeze out all the way around, but I think what I'll do is just wait and clean that up after it's dry. I can take a little small chisel and clean it, lift it up and get it out of the way. It's very minimal. 
if it was a lot, I'd do something different, but I think we're fine this way. So, I'm gonna let that set for 24 hours now. Thank you.